Hi, this is Marina K. Solario from the Red Shutters in Warwick, New York. We're located at 28 Railroad Avenue, and I'm delighted to be here today to present The Style Show, our new show, which talks about decorating fashion and fun. Today we're going to talk about old and new, when to use old, when to use new, when to use antiques, and... Um, and, uh, you know, when a customer prefers, some, we have many customers that prefer new furniture and new items, and we have customers that like old items. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I would like to introduce my producer is with me here, Jude Hammerly. He'll be joining us today. Thank you. And um, uh, also want to mention that if you would like to call in and ask questions, you can reach us at 845-651-1110. That's 845-651-1110. We'd love to take your questions that would relate to decorating fashion and fun. Um, so in terms of uh, last week, we talked a little bit about um, our approach at the Red Shutters, which is that we very much like to reflect you in your home. Um, we do not prescribe to the typical, more 20th century decorating, which is that the decorator comes in and presents his or her own style. We um, take the time to get to know our customers and really reflect who they are in their home. So in doing so, we respect the orientation and the preferences as to whether they like old or new things. And so while I have an antique shop, small antique shop on Railroad Avenue, I also offer in the back um, a selection of many, many furniture lines, of new furniture lines, um, new fabrics. Um, we offer the full market of full fabrics that are available. And also wallpapers, all new wallpapers. So my belief is that if you mix old and new, actually it can be quite a striking, um, you can get wonderful results. So we often try to figure out if a customer prefers old or new things and uh, feel that there's reasons to do both. Um, you can log on to the Red Shutters website, which is www.theredshutters.com. And if you hit the shop section, you'll see we have many different categories of things that we offer. I'm going to talk a little bit about those different things today. Um, armoires, chairs, chests and dressers, um, sofas, mirrors, and so forth. In terms of old and new, just to give you an idea of um, different ways you can do things. And of course, you should always do what you're comfortable with and what you like. Um, we have customers in Warwick that um, love our mirror selection. We have a great selection of mirrors. I always keep them on hand. And um, an old mirror in a certain space can really add tremendous character um, and create a window within a room. It reflects the light, and, um, and then the frame itself, if, if it's old, can add a wonderful, charming effect, and, and uh, its patina um, uh, present a real statement about you and your home. Uh, so we're delighted to offer a great selection of mirrors. We also have new mirrors, and uh, and sometimes a new mirror is a good idea. For example, if you're doing a master bath, uh, you may want just a simple, clean, modern mirror. Um, or if in a, in a front hall, you might want a modern mirror, a simple, very simple, plain mirror. But um, uh, there is great value in older mirrors, and uh, and we encourage that, in, especially at the shop. We have some great selections there. Um, armoires is something interesting to talk about. Armoires is not as popular today, especially because TVs now mount to the walls. It used to be that an armoire, a TV would go into an armoire and house, uh, you know, could be kind of tucked away. TVs used to be deep and take up space and so forth, so an armoire would be a perfect way to house them. But now, armoires are used more for storage. They can be a striking statement in a room. Um, we have a beautiful 18th century French armoire right now at the shop that came out of a tuxedo park home. Um, that's a wonderful statement piece. But again, um, mostly people are using these for storage now versus um, TVs. So uh, one might prefer a wall unit or wall system for their TV or just to simply hang it on the wall over a dresser or um, a side table. So that's another um, way to use. You could use an old armoire to make a statement or a new one for storage, but um, you know that's, that's up to you, of course. Um, 
The other thing that uh, the other area that old and new um, has actually made recent changes is we're seeing trends in lighting, in chandeliers and in lamps. Um, the uh, it's wonderful to find a chandelier that's old and has some character to it, and you can find them today at great values. But we find that m many of our customers prefer new lamps, and one reason they do, and they're and they're smart to do so, is because it it's a way to modern up a room. Even if you have a, a pretty fussy room, if you throw some modern lamps in with color or height or a silver chrome look, um, it really can add a nice lean modern look. So many of our customers are leaning toward modern lamps and we respect that fully and we have a wonderful um, company that we offer lamps through which is Visual Comfort. So you can come check out the catalog anytime down at the shop. Um, also, artwork is another area. Maybe you want to say something on that, Jude. I know you're an avid art collector. Oil paintings in particular add a texture to a room that you can't match any other way. Even if you collect works on paper, there's a sheet of glass between you and the artwork. Um, so if you can become um, adept, or if you, you can even have fun collecting oil paintings, they do add something that um, you can't get any other way. Um, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be educated. You don't have to have majored in art history to be an effective collector of oil paintings um, and uh, you know they are everywhere they're in uh, thrift stores they're in little antiques booths in antique centers there are flea markets um, all the time the uh, Warwick community has a very large um, collection of artists who are constantly getting together on Village Green to display their works and, um, you know, I can give you three, I think, suggestions as to how to become a very effective collector of oil paintings. Um, the first is to choose the colors in an astute way. Um, and the simplest way for me to help you understand an astute way to choose the colors is to recommend that you go in and sit with Marina uh, have a color consultation. She'll take you through the color wheel and she'll show you the colors that without fail coordinate with each other and fit together in a room. Um, I collect in general modern American paintings and uh, there is a certain color scheme to them and I always stay within that color scheme. So that's just my sensibility but Marina can help you develop your own color sensibility. The second way that you can collect oil paintings, the second way that you can organize your collection is to collect by subject. I know Marina was in at the, um, the Metropolitan Museum seeing the George Bellows show this week, and uh, George Bellows painted New York subjects um, to a high level and uh, prolifically. And so one of the ways that you could organize your, um, your collection is by uh, collecting Warwick subjects. And, or, or New York subjects, and uh, and in fact, I do both. Um, my my collection includes skyscrapers and bridges, uh, New York individual street scenes, and you know I strongly recommend them. They they they're plentiful, they're available, and if chosen in the right colors and grouped together, as Marina can show you how to do, um, they make it you know an exceptional statement. And finally, one of my general principles for collecting art is. Um, the piece that you're looking at should make you wonder, how did she do that, or how did he do that, if the artist is a man? Um, by that I mean, you know, the trick to art is you're creating an illusion, especially in an oil painting, which is on a two-dimensional flat canvas. How is the artist creating depth? How is the artist depicting something particularly difficult, like the difference between a distant skyscraper and one that's close together? How are they manipulating the atmospheric haze in between the two, um, the two objects, one in the foreground and one in the back? So virtually everything great that you see in, in the art world, go to the Met and, and, and you will say, well, how the heck did they make that helmet? How the heck did they build that shield? How the heck did they do that painting? When you get that feeling... And just walking around in the simplest of stores, well, maybe you should think, hey, that, that might be a piece of art I want to acquire. Hmm. You know, and I often say, if you can walk into an interior and, they, and say, how did they accomplish that? And I think a lot of that 
that is often accomplished by adding actually older things, adding antiques, adding one-of-a-kind things that took time to find and put together. So those are some great comments. And I'll say furthermore on collecting art that you really want the piece to appeal to you. You want to look at it, and it, it should be pleasing to you. And the better uh, dealers will often let you hold it for a few days to be sure that it grows on you and it doesn't grow away from you. So um, thank you for uh, commenting on the art. Um, prints and framed pictures are also another great way to decorate, and um, we offer those new at the store, um, and you can have them framed up. It's it's not an inexpensive process to do that. But then we also offer many, many prints that are secondhand, and we have great values and prices on those, so you should come check those out because that's a great way to decorate. So you've got three ways to decorate your walls uh, reasonably. Mirrors, which I can will say you never can have enough of in a room. They add reflection, light, character, and um, in a room, for example, an 18th century room in Boscobol, the main salon there was originally furnished in, with all mirrors. And, uh, and that was used so that the candles would reflect the light in the room. So all mirrors in that room. So never enough mirrors in a room. So you can use prints, mirrors, and oil, oil artworks. And um, I like what you said about local. I think that it, supporting our local artists, it's a wonderful feeling. You know, if you can buy something reasonably that was painted locally, there's a real story behind it. You live in the town where they painted it, you know, where they live also. Um, usually they're great values. Artists, Our local artists, artists offer great values. And we have exceptional talent around here. I'm a big fan of Janet Howard Fada. And um, and Jason Gallard, I work with them often as well. So, lot, but there are many, many talented artists here in Warwick that we're delighted to uh, to present. And you can come check them out, like we, Jude had said before, down on the Village Green, especially in the summers. And uh, and uh, ask me also if you want to find out more about local artists. There are many I can send you to. And when you're on Railroad Green, remember you're about five steps away from the Red Shutters. So yes, thank uh, you. by all means, make the Red Shutters. Uh, a stop every time you go to to Railroad Green. The other thing I want to encourage is that you, uh, if you're on Facebook, I would love you to like the Red Shutters. Um, we post uh, daily what we're up to on our projects and what we have available at the shop. It's kind of a fun um, site to like, so I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I want to point out um, one of the things we, we're going to want to do on this show is... Um, is tell you about some events that are happening. And um, I want to tell you that Glenmere is offering a ladies spa day coming up. And that is on, let me just pull here, March 27th, Wednesday, March 27th. That's ladies spa day. There will be 15% off all treatments on that day. And uh, there'll be boutique sales, and they do a wonderful job with tea sandwiches, and you can have lunch or dinner. We encourage you to check out the Glenmere Mansion. Also, um, you should know that that is um, a local Relay and Chateau property. It has 19 rooms, and um, it was built in 1911 as uh, for Robert Golette. Uh, great place to, to on Thursday nights to have a wine supper, beautiful Italianate mansion, and we strongly encourage you to check out the spa, which is a Red Shutters project that we did recently and was just named one of the top 100 places in the world to visit by Departures Magazine. So we're very excited about that. So that's March 27th, Ladies Spa Day for our, for us local ladies, 15% off on Wednesday, March 27th. So call them soon to book your treatments because they, they book up fast for those days. I encourage you to call 469-1900. Uh, the other event I just want to mention briefly that's coming up on Saturday, March 9th, is the Women's Seasons Luncheon that is sponsored by the women of the AME Church in, here in Warwick at Mulder Chapel Hall. We are honoring uh, many important ladies, uh, and I love that idea that we honor women of Warwick, and two uh, good friends of mine in particular, Mrs. Deborah Kroll and Mrs. Karen Thomas. Deborah Sweeten will also be honored, and many other wonderful ladies. So please try to attend Saturday, March 9th, 1 to 5 p.m at the Mulder Chapel Hall here in Warwick. Um, and finally, for local events, uh, this Sunday at Warwick Grove at from 2 to 3 p.m., I will be doing a workshop called Trend or Fad Smart Decorating Choices. So I would love for you to come down and join me at the Warwick Grove Community Center, which is on Cropsey Street in Warwick Grove. 
That's at 2 p.m. this Sunday. Trend or fad, smart decorating choices. People love this workshop. You kind of find out what's going on and what works in your home. And um, I'll, you know, interact with the audience and talk more about that. And what to avoid. The fad, the fad part. <laughs> the fad part, right. <laughs> yes, fads can be costly and expensive and you want to be careful. Again, if you have any questions and you would like to call in, it's 845-651-1110. Um, let's go back to talking a little bit about new and old. Um, well, silver is a, is a big thing that we like to carry at the Red Shutters. Love silver. Silver um, can be used in many ways, especially in the dining room. Um, we have avid, avid silver collectors, and we offer things like candelabra, uh, wine coolers, uh, serving pieces. You know, it's so funny. I often will go to entertain and realize I don't have the big fork on hand or the big spoon on hand, and we, we try to stock many of those. Uh, we have beautiful small silver plates. We have um, uh, bowls, silver bowls, which are a wonderful way to make a statement. So uh, old silver I, is a, a great way to kind of sparkle up your, your home and your dining room. And, um, and older silver is a great value today, so I, I strongly encourage that. While sterling has gotten, you know, very expensive as a result of the precious metals run up, silver plate items have uh, emerged as a, you know, considerable value where you can get something beautiful and... Uh, which is sterling to every eye except yours, because you know the truth. Um, you know, silver plate items are a terrific way to design on a budget. That's that's true. That's great. Um, other thing I want to talk about: old and new, uh, old versus new, is a pol- are upholstered pieces. Um, at the Red Shutters, we carry uh, one, uh, several new, several new furniture companies. One in particular that I like very much is C.R. Lane. Um, it is made in America, still in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, I very much encourage purchasing here in the U.S. and uh, try to keep most most of my companies U.S. made. Um, they are committed to style, comfort, and color, and they do that brilliantly. They have they offer over 500 beautiful fabrics that are on trend, uh, graphics, icots, great colors. Um, their frames are top quality, made with. Um, Kiln-dried hardwoods, they offer the eight-way hand-tied construction. Um, Each coil is hand-tied to the frame in eight separate places by hand. They will offer Benjamin Moore color choices if you want your frames done in color. Uh, The frames and suspensions carry a lifetime warranty. And um, and we love to use CR Lane often. Um, and we have several other new furniture companies as well. But I also encourage considering secondhand or older upholstery because the weight and the, the way that they were made is almost uh, often unmatched. If you can find a heavy old upholstered frame and have it reupholstered, you can really wind up with something, something special. It'll have that vintage look. Um, you get great value out of it. Um, I recently sold a leather sofa last week that um, went to a client down in New York City, and and she got a great value um, for her office down there. So um, that's something to think about. We also have frames that are even tattered and torn, and you're looking at just the frame and redoing the frame, and we offer excellent prices on those frames, and then you can reupholster them. If you have a frame that has a decent um, upholstery job on it, but you simply want to change the color, then you can slip cover it, which is about a third less than a reupholstering. So that's often um, a great option. And the same is true of chairs. If you want new chairs, you can have any size, any style, any um, you know seat construction, back construction, any height, any width, any depth, if you want new. But if you fall in love with an old one, you can wind up with real character and um, a chair with real character and, um, uh, you know, and, and have that kind of special chair, or a special pair of chairs. Again, great value in older frames. Um, we have wonderful fabrics to cover it on. One of my favorite fabric companies that we use is Doralee. Um, Doralee has uh, been in business since 1952. They are... Um, uh, also, excellent value and one of the top companies for knocking off the latest fabrics. Often a trend will occur, 
Uh, right now, we're seeing a big tribal trend, trends of graphic prints, and um, and that often takes a little while to hit the market. You know, the high-end designers will first release it, and then we rely on companies like Dora Lee to reproduce them. They offer 26,000 different fabrics. Um, they have excellent contract fabrics. I use their fabrics up at the spot, Glenmere. What's a contract fabric? Uh, contract fabric is for hotels and commercial use. Uh, very, very durable. And I also use them at beach houses where it needs to, to take the, the abuse of sand and wet. <laughs> um, so that, that's a good question. Um, so we... Uh, Dorley has uh, various price ranges and so forth. So Dorley, Highland Court, Suburban Home are their three main um, um, three main divisions, and uh, and we encourage Dorley Fabrics. So, and you can come check out the full library at um, the studio on Railroad Avenue, in the back of the shop. So don't ever be afraid to walk back there. We encourage you to come visit us and see our selection. We have many books of Dorley back there. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, a little bit about today, which is kind of fun, and we always try to keep on hand, and um, which is our stools and benches and ottomans. I can't keep them in the shop long enough. They seem to go quickly and easily recovered. They make a, a, a nice little statement in the room. They're a great place to just put a book or put stacks of books to add an additional seat um, to put your feet up. Um, so we love to offer stools, benches, and ottomans, and those secondhand are a great value. If you want a particular, maybe an, uh, we also offer new ones in, say, the clover shape, or you can get them fully upholstered. You can get them that the legs show. Um, you can get them with a little Queen Anne leg. You can get them with a modern leg. Lots of ways uh, that they come, but... Um, that think about stools, benches, and ottomans in your rooms. They can make a big difference. This is another thing people could stumble on at an antique center and then bring into the red shutters and have instantly modernized with the correct choice of fabric. Right. You could wind up painting the legs. We, there's all the kinds of things that we can do. Um the other thing that we offer a lot of at the Red Shutters are gifts and accessories, jewelry, um, and that's a great value secondhand. Um, uh, I, I, you know, there's 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 positives too to buying new though. It's it's fun to go to places um, and walk in. You know, I love to go to New Hards and walk in and. Um, and see all that he has to offer in tabletop and so forth. But we also offer that if you want to add some character. We have older things. And again, combining the old and new is a great thing. It can create a contrasted look. Uh, you get that that when people walk into your house, oh, how did they do that? that that's what you, that question. Um, so very excited about that. It's funny you talk about New Hards, which has a great selection of modern cookware. And I know that you personally use antique cookware in your kitchen as a design element. Yeah, copper. Um, we, we do love copper, and it's also very decorative. The color is beautiful. I have stacks of it on either side of my stove. And, uh, and then I do always try to carry copper at the shop because it's, uh, it's highly decorative and, um, and not being made as much today and not being used as much, but has a lot of character. Again, the character um, very much comes into play with, with some older things, and I'm always happy to recommend you know, where to, the draw, to draw the lines on old and new. When you shop in the city, do you um, have particular places you like to go or particular places you like to stay? Yeah, I um, I am a big fan. I, I often try to visit the Met. Um, it's one of my favorite places. I'm a member there. And recently uh, went and visited the Islamic galleries, which I thought were exceptional. Um, probably, and I understand and read later that they're one of the, uh, the most visited galleries now at the Met because they are incredibly well done, and I encourage you to go see them. And um, when I stay in Manhattan, whether I'm going to the D&D building or working with a client, I will often stay at the Fitzpatrick Hotel, which is on 57th and Lexington Avenue. It is got a, a wonderful Irish charm to it. It's done in the classic style, yet, you know, newly refurbished and modern. It is very comfortable, uh, outstanding service. Everyone there knocks themselves out for you. The value is great. I think it's uh, on, on average one ninety nine a night, which in New York is a great price for a midtown hotel. They also have another location down on Grand Central and 44th Street. It's convenient to Bloomingdale, Central Park, and Carnegie Hall. Um, and of course, uh, you know, I'm delighted that it's convenient to the decorating district. Um, 
and uh, they have a great bar and restaurant, places, places to hang out, and access to a sports club, and also a boardroom that um, accommodates 14 guests and uh, is uh, among the most comfortable meeting rooms there is in the area. So it is a great um, hotel to check out in, in Manhattan. It's funny to sum up uh, almost, I think, what you've been saying about old and new. Um, it, it's uh, interesting that the Red Shutters fits in in every possible way to the to the concept, which is you can come to the Red Shutters and shop in the front of the store and buy old goods, antiques, and you can shop in the back of the store and buy new custom furniture and fabrics and wallpaper, or you can take your old things and bring them into the Red Shutters and let the Red Shutters make them new. So um, this is about a source for solutions in a home, and um, whether it's old or new you want, it seems to me like the Red Shutters is the place to go. Mm-hmm. We... Um we are delighted to offer you know many things. The other thing I would encourage you to check out if you come in is our wallpaper selection. We are for um, Tebow and uh, and many others, and um, have all the classic books. Uh, we find many people like to just even browse through them. I'm going to talk about this Sunday at Warwick Grove at the workshop. Um, at 2 o'clock, I'll talk about wallpaper and the trends of wallpaper. Wallpaper being very much on trend now, especially grass papers, um, graphic papers. I posted on Facebook this morning a graphic paper that was recently installed at a client's house here locally. And I got lots of reactions. I was very excited about that. And... Um, so yeah, we encourage you to come in, check check things out. Again, you know, like us on Facebook. Check out the website when you can, www.theredshutters.com. Um, you can email me if you have questions, and um, and also sign up for our email on the homepage of the website. And um, check out what we have in the store. We have you know everything from desks to um, to jewelry. We, uh, I also want to mention, and um, you may want to talk about this a little bit, that we offer libraries, which um, is all older books, secondhand books, but you can uh, you know, put together a library very quickly at a great value with, with older books. And of course, you'll have fun purchasing your own new ones that you'll add in, but if you want a big impact um, quickly, we offer a um, massive amount of books and uh, you say some more about that, Jude. Well, um, books are a perfect example of old and new. Some books never go out of fashion. The classics are always collectible, always smart, whether they're in old bindings or new. Um, they're books you should read. And that's what the Style Show is all about, having a home that makes sense and reflects you. Great. Thanks so much for joining us here at WTBQ. WTBQ.